Well, I tried three times in two days to get in touch with the insured by phone, and they didn't answer. So now I'm gonna put a note in the diary to send a contact letter, and I'm gonna close my file. I can't be bothered with it if people don't wanna call me back. In this video, learn why even if you can't get a hold of an insured, that's no reason to give a file back. Learn what you should do instead, starting now. This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by the multinational IA firm Crawford & Company. To be the best, you have to join the best at croco.com slash cat. Hey, Matt here and welcome to Adjuster TV where I share my more than 20 years of experience as a cat property IA to help you build a rewarding career as an independent insurance adjuster so that you can help people during natural disasters and earn a great living doing it. All right, rule number three, never give a file back. Here's a scenario. You receive 30 claims on a hail deployment and you start making your first contact calls. You're able to make voice to voice or text first contacts with almost all of your people. You leave voicemails on a few, but there are a couple of stubborn ones that are coming back as either wrong numbers or that just ring and ring and ring with no answer. Or you leave a bunch of messages and they never call you back. And I think this is a good place to remind you that we as IAs get paid by the claim. So if you aren't able to inspect claims like this, you're going to lose money and that's the first challenge. The second challenge is that somebody filed that claim, a person. Whether you do it or whether somebody else does it, that claim has got to get handled one way or another. The bottom line with this rule is that you never give a file back because you don't want to lose money or create work for somebody else down the road, which can have a negative impact on your reputation as an adjuster if you're always giving files back just because they're harder to get a hold of. So what do you do when that happens? Well, first, let's take a couple of steps back. Before you started your contact calls, you were doing your claims recon and routing and building out your schedule. Every claim has a date and time in your schedule and they will keep that spot in your schedule unless the claim is either canceled or gets rescheduled by you and the insured or their contractor. So let's just start there. They keep their spot no matter what. This is going to become more important in just a second. Pretend that today is Monday and the appointment time you want for this particular insured is this Thursday at 9 a.m. You call and leave a message. You need to identify yourself in this message and it needs to include the date and time you want to inspect this loss. Hey, this is Matt with Acme Insurance and I'm the adjuster assigned your hail damage claim to your home at 1234 Street in Springfield. I'll be in your neighborhood on Thursday, March 23rd at 9 a.m. to look at your house for hail damage. Again, that's this, this coming up Thursday, March 23rd at 9 a.m. Please call me back or shoot me a text at 555-1212 to confirm an appointment at 9 a.m. this Thursday, March 23rd. Should only take about an hour or so. Thank you and talk to you soon. Notice that I repeated the day, date, and time three times. And even if I was able to contact this person directly, I would do the same thing. Why? I can't tell you the number of times I've had people get the appointment date and time wrong if I only mention it once. You were supposed to be here Tuesday at four o'clock. What? Where the heck did you get that? This saves you time in the long run for what I hope are very obvious reasons. If you don't hear back from that person within 24 hours, make another call and maybe send a text. So you still have to do both leaving a voicemail and sending a text. They might even have an email address. Same rules apply. Be sure to note the file every time you make a contact attempt. All right, so another 24 hours passes and still nothing. Leave another message, basically the exact same thing. Leave a total of three messages, but don't give that file back yet. In a slightly different scenario, what do you do when you try calling a claim and you get no answer? You make a note of it in the file as a contact attempt, but the very next phone call you're gonna make is to this insured's agent or local sales agency. Identify yourself and ask them if they have more contact numbers for this insured. Be sure to have your loss report in front of you so that you can take this info down. Be sure also to give the agent your phone number and let them know that if this insured or any other comes in or calls asking for you specifically to please give them your number. Try the numbers that the agent gave you. Nine times out of ten you'll get a hold of the insured and you can just move right on down the road. But what happens if even those numbers are wrong. And believe me, this will happen more often than you might think. Either way, you've now got a claim that you haven't made first contact with, so I guess just give it back, right? 
Now, this may come as a surprise to you, especially if you're younger than Generation X, but there's another way to contact people besides phone, text, or email. It's called, just go to their house. Here's how this works in these two scenarios. Remember how we said that no matter what, the insured keeps their appointment time and date unless you guys both change it? In both scenarios, if you can't make first contact with the insured by the time the appointment time and day comes around, you're gonna show up at the insured's house 9 a.m. Thursday, March 23rd, and you're gonna knock on the door. Make sure that you have a door hanger with you in case nobody is home. Early in my career, if I tried getting a hold of the insured and left the messages stating when I was going to be there, and they never called back to confirm, and then I didn't show up, invariably I would get a call from the insured, a contractor, the agent, or worse, my manager going, bro, you were supposed to be at so-and-so's at 9 a.m. this morning and you were a no-show, what the heck? And you're like, but nobody got out back with me. It doesn't matter. Show up at 9 a.m. on Thursday, and if anybody is there, there's a good chance that they're going to be expecting you. They just didn't bother to call you back. If they're not expecting you, especially if you couldn't get a hold of them at all or leave a message, then you're going to make your first contact right now. Knock, 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 knock. Hi, I'm Matt, your adjuster with Acme Insurance. I had tried calling a few times. Is this your correct number? Oh no, we haven't used that one for years. Or, oh, that's Bob's landline in the garage. I didn't even know there was an answering machine on it. Not a problem. Well, I was hoping to take a look at your house this morning right now for your hail claim. It should only take me about an hour or so. Do you mind if I do my inspection now? I think in 20 years of field claims, I had maybe one person say, no, sorry, we're running out the door for whatever. Or the insured isn't there, but the ABC restoration guy is sitting in his idling truck waiting for you. Boom. You just save yourself some money and you save somebody else from having to clean up after you if you had turned this file in for a contact letter. But what if nobody is there at all? You leave a door hanger with the following note. Please call me to set an inspection appointment. Put your name and put your cell phone number on there. If somebody actually lives there, that is if it's not a vacant rental property, you're most likely going to get a call back from this insurer. Then you can set a new appointment and go from there. You might think it's a good idea to go ahead and try and save yourself some time by inspecting the house. I mean, you're standing right there after all, but I have found that this causes enough customer service snafus that it's not really worth it. You'll get things like, I really wanted to be there to show you the damage, plus we have interior damage. Or the guy works nights and you wake him up while you're tromping around on the roof and 5-0 rolls up. It's happened to me a couple of times. But worst case scenario after all that is that the insured still doesn't call you back. At this point, there really isn't anything else you can do to try and make contact with the insured short of trying a second drive-by contact if you're in the neighborhood. Maybe on a Saturday morning when it's more likely that somebody will be home. But you can't keep the file forever and this is where I would reach out to my IA team manager and ask them what to do next. I would also call the agent back and explain exactly what's going to happen with the claim. Guaranteed, the insured will eventually get so frustrated waiting that they will stomp into the agent's office and you don't want the agent to be blindsided. Your manager may have you give the file back or they may tell you to hang on to it and keep trying every few days until it's time to wrap up the storm. But whatever you do, do not give back the file after trying to call only a couple of times. You owe it to the insurer to try harder, you owe it to the people downstream who may have to handle that claim anyway, and you owe it to yourself not to give up that paycheck. If you're looking for comprehensive and free video training on how to become an insurance adjuster done in signature Adjuster TV style, then check out adjustertv.com slash start and get your career off the ground the right way. Okay, that's it for me. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. Adjuster TV, it's all in the wrist.